Oh, hey there. So, you finally made it. You sure kept me waiting, Captain. And it appears we have a couple of stowaways. Or perhaps I should say, honored guests. Shush! You can blame your almighty Shogun. The tempests around Inazuma have been growing all the more fierce lately. Though the fleet was fully up to the challenge, the inclement weather still caused some delay. Now then, let me introduce everyone. This is Toma, a trade partner that I've gotten to know recently. <laughs> you don't know how long I've been waiting to see you. Toma, these two are... Oh, no need for introductions. Their reputation precedes them. It seems even the stormy seas can't keep rumors of these outlander sterling deeds at bay. <laughs> oh, it's sure nice to hear you say that. <laughs> With any luck, it'll give you a head start here. Toma's resided on Rito for quite some time now. It wouldn't be going too far to say he's the fixer around these parts. If you run into any problems here, just talk to Toma. But if he tries to pull any moves on you, I'll be sure to deal with him personally the next time I'm around. <laughs> no need to worry. I'm sure we'll get along just fine. Good. Then if it's all settled, I'll be going. I wouldn't want to be caught with my sails down here. I do have a wanted fugitive on board, after all. Oh, right. Kazuha. Until next time, Traveler. Remember to give it your all, no matter what perilous storms you may encounter. Fair seas, Captain Beto! Bye-bye! Now then, first things first. We need to go get you registered at the border checkpoint. Um, Paimon thought we were supposed to be keeping things on the down low. Are we just gonna walk into the government's hands? <laughs> Don't underestimate the reaches of the Sokoku Decree. You wouldn't be able to avoid inspection even if you tried. So we have to play by the rules, even if we're kind of bending them. Hello? Please state your name, identity, and the purpose of your visit. Oh, except you, Toma. You must be... new here. Uh -huh. Excuse me? Please provide the information requested and also declare any goods you are carrying with you. Oh, well, I'm sorry. We cannot approve entry for purely personal reasons. So, unless you have a valid reason for visiting in accordance with the rules... Um... Uh... We... Uh... My apologies, but I'll have to ask you to... Here are the entry papers. For your kind perusal. What? Ugh, take your time! No rush or anything! <laughs> I just wanted to see what you'd say. Sorry about that. I see. Okay. Your papers are all in order. Welcome to Rito. <sighs> so, where do we go next? The Outlander Affairs Agency. Uh, they only check entry permits here. If you want to remain on Rito, there's a process you have to go through with them. Sheesh. So it is super strict, just like everyone says. Well, let's not forget that to everyday folk in Inazuma, people from everywhere else are referred to as outsiders. As the word suggests, outlanders aren't very welcome in Inazuma with the Sokoku Decree in force. Not even on Rito, where they've established an outsider settlement. <laughs> I like how you think. I've got a feeling we're going to get along very well. Now, let's head over to the Outlander Affairs Agency. Most of the current rules were put in place by the administration of Rito, the Kanjo Commission. The Kanjo Commission? Yes, one branch of the Tri-Commission of Inazuma, responsible for growing and managing the nation's wealth. Um, you really haven't heard of it before? Huh. <sighs> 
you've completed the entry procedures, yes? And now you want to apply for residency, both of you? Yes, please. Okay, the processing fee will be two million mora. Two million? For a processing fee? Are you serious? That's right. One million per applicant, which makes two million total. Don't worry. You can trust my math. Paimon wasn't so much questioning your math as... <laughs> Ma'am, these two here are good friends of mine. I think you'll find I'm one face you recognize. Ah, Mr. Toma, it's you. By way of courtesy, allow me to reduce it to... 400,000 mora total. <laughs> Thank you ever so much, Miss Eureka. But as this is just a processing fee, I think 600 mora should cover it if I'm paying on their behalf. I'll treat you to dinner too. How does that sound? That's not how you haggle! By all means, bargain the price down, but... Alright then, as you wish, Mr. Toma. I will make a record. <laughs> Much obliged. Something seriously wrong with people's sense of finance around here! <laughs> it's not as mind-boggling as you think. Processing fee is just a figure of speech. The way some here at the agency see it, the fees are easy money. So it becomes a question of how much they can make. So when the day comes that some poor merchant from overseas with more money than cents gets stuck here and needs to apply for residency... Then they'll milk them for all their worth! Exactly. It's at times like this that having a local friend really comes in handy. Yes, but when you're an outlander in Inazuma, far from home in this close nation era, there's very little that can be done about it. The most that overseas merchants can do to look after themselves is stick together. That's how the International Trade Association came about. So it's a trade association built by and for outlanders? Yep. And as well as advancing commercial interests, the association provides help, support, and structure for outlanders trying to survive on Rito. Essentially, it's an association devoted to both commercial excellence and survival skills. <sighs> Sounds like just staying alive is an achievement when you're an outlander in Inazuma. I see. So this is the real purpose of your trip. Yes, given that you are outlanders, it's certainly a lofty aspiration. After all, the Raiden Shogun is the most exalted and revered one in all of Inazuma. She is a deity who reigns on high, while all other life gazes up in awe. Huh. I was going to say nothing is set in stone when it comes to who you will encounter in this world. Who's to say you won't happen to run into the Raiden Shogun one day after lunch? Uh-huh. And is that likely? Okay, I'll give it to you straight. I know of a way to introduce you to the Raiden Shogun. Really? Wow, the Rito Fixer is better connected than we thought. <laughs> I mean, it will take all the resources I have at my disposal, but it can be done. However, before we get there, connections come at a high price, you understand? Ugh, not you too. <laughs> no, no. In this instance, when I say price, I'm not talking about Mora. In fact, there's no real cost as such. It's just that, if this is something you really want, you'll have to agree to help other people solve some of their problems first. I like to do things in a way that keeps everybody happy. It's my own personal rule for dealing with situations like this. Sounds very reasonable to Paimon. You're the man in the middle, so you have to trade favors to keep everyone indebted to you. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling you're making me out to be some sort of crook? Uh, never mind. Here's the situation. As I touched upon earlier, the members of the International Trade Association are constantly struggling to survive. Recently, things seem to have gotten more difficult than ever for them, so just go and check things out. See if there's any way you can help. The head of the association is called Carisio, and he's a good friend of mine. Go talk to him. I'll wait for you here. This is the Outlander Affairs Agency. Please have your 
documents and proof of identification ready. Huh? Hello there. You must be seeking refuge with the International Trade Association. The Outlander Affairs Agency took you for all your worth, I suppose. Ah, good. That's a relief. You need to be careful, or you'll find yourself losing your savings all at once. We heard the Association has been having some difficulties lately. Is that true? Yes. Left, right, and center. Obstacles at every turn. But that's nothing new for us. The Sokoku Decree certainly makes things difficult for anyone who wants to come here from overseas. But it's not the root cause of our woes. The Sokoku Decree might restrict our scope of activity, but in and of itself it doesn't stop us from being able to enjoy a comfortable existence. No. What's really squeezing us Outlander merchants dry is... those Mora Grubbers from the Kanjo Commission. Oh, of the three commissions, that's the one that oversees everything on retail, isn't it? That's right. They impose astronomical tax rate, unbelievable regulations, and that's not the worst of it. They just issued a new tax decree recently that, for some reason, completely changes the way we pay our taxes. It used to be Mora, but now it's something called Crystal Marrow. Crystal Marrow? What's that? Ugh, something that most of us in the Association had never heard of before either, until the new decree came along. Eventually, one of the older Liyue merchants recalled that he once shipped a batch of it to Snezhnaya in his youth. So, in order to pay our taxes, we began an arduous search for this crystal marrow. But then we found we'd only managed to create a bigger problem for ourselves. The rising demand for crystal marrow drove the price higher and higher. Now there's only one vendor who even has it in stock. We can't get a hold of it anywhere else. Uh, isn't that what they call a monopoly? Exactly. So this vendor keeps pushing the price up, and we have no choice but to buy from them because the tax decree forces us to. It's a vicious cycle. The consequence of which is that our taxes will soon exceed our profits. And once that happens... <laughs> <sighs> We've tried communicating with the Commission directly, but this is a nation where the cries of a few struggling merchants will never be heard over the ever-present roar of thunder. Ah, <sighs> Fontaine, my dear homeland. I miss you an awful lot at the moment. Sounds awful. They're really bleeding them dry. What do you think we should do? Uh, that vendor... I've actually done business with him in the past, but after a point he stopped contacting us. I have no idea where he sources the stuff. Hmm... Well, it definitely sounds like he's being unfair. How do we find him? We could go talk to him and see if he lets anything slip. Hey, that's a pretty good idea. Since you're not affiliated with the Association and you're new to Rito, he may just let his guard down. <sighs> If I remember correctly, our usual meeting point with him is under a tree by the coast in the residential district. See if you can find him there. Got it! We're on the case! I don't think I recognize you. Are you new arrivals? So, what do you need with me? The sheer nerve. You don't go around asking questions like that. If I gave you my sources, I might as well hand you the whole darn business. Trade secret, got it? You know what trade and secret mean, right? <laughs> this guy's got a bad attitude. Ha! <laughs> Are you even buying? 
Oh, I see what's going on here. Karisu and his associates sent you here to try and plead their case, didn't they? <laughs> They're wasting their time. The price is non-negotiable. Not by a single mora. Hey, what's your problem? Get out of here, go on. Tell them they're lucky to be buying from me in the first place. And they ought to be more grateful. If it weren't for me, they'd be in seriously hot water. What are we gonna do? There's no talking to this guy. Good idea! Let's check back in with him. Hmm? That was quick. You resolved it already? Um, actually, we're having a little trouble. Oh? Well, by all means, tell me what you need. I'll help as much as I can. Getting you to go fixing things when you've only just arrived is quite a demand. Oh, that guy? I'm familiar. He used to be a bit of a sorry sight, selling shells that he'd collect on the beach just to get by, but he seems to have suddenly shot up in the world recently. I can only assume he must have found himself a patron after leaving the International Trade Association. Huh. You're saying he used to be a member of the International Trade Association? So he's an outlander too? Yes. Couldn't you tell when you spoke to him? That's right. Werner was born in Mondstadt, then went into the shipping business, trading between Leah and Inazuma. When Inizuma closed to the outside world, he was one of a group of outlanders that ended up stranded on Rito. Huh. What a bummer! The International Trade Association was initially very generous to him, but over time, with decree after decree, the association members found it increasingly difficult to make ends meet. So he left the association and turned his back on them! <laughs> I'm sure it's more nuanced than that. I believe even the most ungrateful and cold-hearted of people still have some amount of gratitude and warmth left in them somewhere. Really? Is that all you need to know? Well then, it sounds like you may have found a way in with him. Useless! What are you doing back here? Just cause I got plenty of time on my hands, doesn't mean I want to waste any of it talking to you. Huh? Where is this coming from? Mondstadt? You were talking about... Mondstadt? Goodness, I can sense it now. So familiar, but I can't remember the last time I was there. <sighs> the scent of Mondstadt. Oh, how it takes me back. Ah, oh, my hometown. The home of freedom. How I long to go back and visit. Oh, it's working! <sighs> oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> so, trying to play my heartstrings like a liar, are you? I know what you're up to. Huh? What is this? What are you up to now? Just close your eyes already! You mean... the sound of the ocean? <gasps> Leah Harbor! I can see it so clearly. Uh, oh, and the sound of the waves! The calls of the merchants! Xiao Lanterns! <laughs> I'm right there, at the lantern right! Oh, look at them floating up into the sky. This guy has a really active imagination. Either that, or he really does miss Liyue Harbor. <sighs> Liyue. Liyue. Wait. Stop. That's enough. Don't make me relive it anymore. My poor heart can't take it. You mean, 
the folks from the International Trade Association. And I suppose they are far from home, just like me. Often, I'll sneak down to the shore at night and listen to the sound of the waves. I like to imagine it's the voice of my hometown, carried across the ocean. I've run into folks from the association more than a few times doing just that, but I always hide my face and slip away. <sighs> Don't you think I've wanted to talk things through with them and free myself from this anguish? Um, well, no one's stopping you, so... <sighs> They're so resilient. None of them had anyone else to rely on, so they rallied together, committed to finding a way to survive. But I couldn't do it. I'm not strong enough. So, I caved. Those people, they'd make the smallest of promises, offer the most measly benefits, and I'd do whatever they asked of me. And make Mondstatters look like the worst people in the world. Alright, I'll tell you the whole story. It's eating me up inside, and I can't take it anymore. You ready to talk now? But I betrayed them. I can't show my face there. Ugh, come on, you scaredy cat. Look, you messed up, but now it's time to make things right. So come on, get it off your chest. What's the deal here? It's a scheme by the tax collection Ashigaru, Keijiro and his companions. They start by overtaxing the merchants, then take the extra crystal marrow they receive and stockpile it. Once the merchants run out of places to buy crystal marrow, they get me to sell that extra stock back to the merchants at an extortionate price, with the proceeds going to the tax collection Ashigaru. It's just... it's plain evil gouging them like this. I'm their puppet, yes. But my cut is a tiny fraction of what we take in total. It's barely enough for me to live on. Evidence? Hmm... you're right. Without conclusive evidence, he will never admit it. Now that I think about it, whenever I report back to him after a sale, he always heads to the same place. It's always made me suspicious. As it happens, I handed some Mora over to him not long ago. I, I can show you where he went if you want. Really? Well, then there's no time to lose. Let's go. Huh. <laughs> Keijiro! It's him! After him! Enjoy the blessing of lesser lords of the valley. Should I please hurry? Oh. It's not like I'll get any customers for freedom. I'm not used to Which it one should I choose? Ah, Ryo. Too close! That's too close! He'll notice this for sure! No. Who too close! That's too close! He'll notice this for sure! He's getting further and further away! Let's catch up a little! Sorry. Hmm. What was that sound? Must be hearing things. Uh, drat, I'm behind schedule. I need to hurry. He's getting further and further away! Let's catch up a little! What could he be doing at a place like this? It looks like he buried something over there, didn't it? Why don't we take a look?
big pile of mora here. <laughs> yeah. Let me take a look here. Ah, yes. This is what we're looking for. A clear and complete record of every single transaction, each one proof of his guilt. Great! Well, now we have our hard evidence. Let's go tell Carissa the good news, shall we? Uh, um, I'll... I'll say goodbye to you here, then. Huh? You aren't gonna come with us? I... I need a little more time before I'm ready to face the head of the association. I'm sorry. Is a pretty awkward guy, huh? But we really don't have anything left. If this keeps up, our sales will come in at a loss. There'll be nothing left for us to do but starve! You know the decree. The rules are the rules. No discounts, no exceptions, and no excuses! Hmm? And who are you? Another new member of the association? It just so happens that we found your little ledger, so now we're here to tell everyone all about how you embezzled Crystal Marrow to sell it right back to the taxpayers! Huh? Is this true? You've been swindling us! Well, uh, you, you, you see, the, the ta taxes, uh... Let me take a look at the ledger. Well, would you look at that? Every payment the Association has made is right here in your personal ledger. So, Mr. Keijiro, it seems you have some explaining to do. How shall we settle this, hmm? Huh. So you think you can use this against me, do you? I it's quite obvious that I'm merely trying to earn a modest living for myself, like anyone else! Word has it that Samurai and the Commission place great importance on reputation and prestige. Though I'm sure Commission members won't blame you once word gets out. Huh? Is that a threat? Are you threatening me? No, not at all. I'm simply stating that it would be quite a pity if an illustrious gentleman such as yourself were to have their reputation tarnished. Uh, well, even if what you say is true, what do you suggest we do about it? I believe you still have a quantity of crystal marrow in your possession, correct? Perhaps that crystal marrow could be used as compensation for the recent tax hike, and us merchants could finally have some more breathing room. Is that it? Oh, do you have any idea the hoops I had to jump through to get the crystal marrow and keep it hidden? Oh, fine. In that case, I'll send it over to you today. And not even an ounce of shame for his actions. So that's it? My shop's been closed for weeks now. I've even had to ask my friends to help bail me out. What about my losses? Come on, Harrison. We've already struck a good deal here. I'm sick of being pushed around like this. I won't let him off so easily. Harrison. Hey, what's all this racket? Does someone dare question the decree? Ah, Chief. You've arrived. What was all the commotion I heard just now? Oh, we were just discussing a minor tax issue. I do my utmost to lend them a helping hand, but they're never grateful. A helping hand? The only thing you're doing is stuffing your greedy pockets with our hard-earned wealth. I assure you that Hirage Shinsuke will hear of this. Oh, and you dare to utter the Commissioner's name. You outlanders have no respect for the rules. Seize the merchants. We will resolve this dispute back at headquarters. Uh-oh. This is going in a bad direction. Gentlemen, gentlemen, come now. Is there any need for this? If there's a dispute to resolve, let's get a drink and talk it over. Who are you supposed to be? And why in my right mind would I join you for a drink? Ha! <laughs> you never heard of the Fixer? Here's my card. Huh. You're from the Yashiro Commission. Shh. Huh. 
Well, this is Kanjo Commission territory. However powerful the Yashiro Commission may be, you have no business meddling in Rito's affairs. Of course not, of course not. Still, perhaps you could show the young lady... ...of our clan some courtesy. You wouldn't want your name showing up in a petition to the Shogun, would you? That fan. The Shirasagi Himegimi. I don't need any trouble with her. <sighs> okay, let's forget all this. It'll give us one less thing to worry about. But, Chief! Enough! We're leaving! Let's get dinner one day soon, gentlemen! My treat, I insist! Uh, no response, huh? I suppose that bridge is well and truly burned, then. Thank you so much, Toma. But I'm sorry your relationship with the Kanjo Commission had to suffer for our sake. <laughs> hey, hey, I was joking. It's a small price to pay, and you're more than welcome. If there's anyone you should be thanking, it's the Traveler. She's the one who found a way to turn things around. <sighs> if nothing else, I'm sure the tax collection Ashigaru will tread a little more carefully in the future. Shh, shh, not here. Too many people listening. <laughs> Let's move somewhere else. Corruption seems rife in the Kanjo Commission. They truly are rotten to the core. <sighs> All right, it's time for me to answer your questions. What would you like to know? <laughs> Straight to the point. Let me reintroduce myself. I belong to the Kamisato clan of the Yashiro Commission on Narukami Island. I'm an attendant of the Shirasagi Himegimi. Uh, you've been keeping your true identity a secret from us this whole time? So, the Yashiro Commission. Guessing that's another branch of the Tri Commission? Correct. The Kamisato clan is the head of the Yashiro Commission, who manage ceremonial and cultural affairs. I'd go into more detail on what exactly that covers, but I'm not even sure myself. I'm just someone who was fortunate enough to be taken in by the Kamisato clan. My role is to take care of the daughter of the clan, Kamisato Ayaka, also known as the Shirasagi Himigimi. Seems like she must be super famous in Inazuma, given the reaction of those guys just now. <laughs> oh, most definitely. She's graceful, dignified, and kind-hearted, too. The people of Inazuma quite adore Miss Kamisato. Her fame even somewhat eclipses that of her older brother, Kamisato Ayato, despite the fact that he's the current head of the clan. I suppose those who treat others with compassion earn themselves the same treatment in return. Miss Kamisato's situation certainly seems to attest to that. Take me, for example. I'm just an attendant, and yet she treats me as an equal, as she would a friend. You're asking the right questions. And, to be honest, I don't want to keep you in the dark any more than is necessary. Firstly, you should know that being a fixer is not something you can fake. I spent the better part of a month tirelessly building up a network of relationships on the island. And I got to know Captain Beto during that time, too. Still pretty good going for just a month's work! <laughs> Well, maybe I have a slight knack for schmoozery, but the main thing was I had to make sure I'd be in time to receive you when you arrived. Inazuma may have closed off to the outside world, but that hasn't stopped a lot of people from hearing about your feats in Monsta and Liyue. So, when Miss Kamisato heard of your intention to come to Inazuma, she began looking forward to your arrival with great anticipation. She's excited to find out whether the rumors are true. That is, that you have what it takes to change the tide of the times. Change the tide of the times? In the test I gave you earlier, although there were a few hiccups at the end, it was you who found the way to turn the situation around. Navigating powerful people, using their character flaws to your advantage, it's just what Miss Kamisato had hoped to see. With your help, even the Vision Hunt Decree... Ah... Uh, hmm... That's an unexpected development. Perhaps our sources were misleading. Yes, of course. I completely understand, and as agreed, I shall help set that up for you. Huh. Toma 
Bowser sure didn't put up much of a fight. <laughs> well, my work on Rito is done. So I suppose this is goodbye for now. Oh, uh, one more thing. This invitation letter is for you. When you get to Narukami Island, you can find me at the Komori Tea House, as per the letter. Good luck with everything. See you soon. Thomas, not such a bad guy, huh? Uh, we should get going. Huh? What's up? Oh, right! Paimon forgot all about that! Wait, so... Did Toma forget that too? Oh, darn it! No wonder he was so matter-of-fact about the whole thing! As soon as we get off Ritu, Paimon's going straight to Kamura Tea House to settle the score! <sighs> well, guess we should give it a try. Let's head to the border and see how far we get. Stop there. Present your travel permits. Sorry, but we really gotta get to Narukami Island. It's kinda urgent. If you don't have a travel permit, this is as far as you'll get. Those are the rules. Ah, <sighs> as expected. Traveler, you gotta think of something. How do we get out of Rito? Are you saying we should go and meet with the Kanjo Commissioner? Guess it can't hurt to try. Even if Paimon has a few choice words to say about his subordinates. Who knows? Maybe he's our biggest fan. <laughs> Halt! This is the Kanjo Commissioner's office. No trespassers. We're here to see, uh, you know, uh, the Kanjo Commissioner? The Kanjo Commissioner seldom entertains outlanders. Leave now or we'll be forced to... Ah, wait, wait, wait. Uh, oh, Commissioner! These two are honored guests from afar. No need to give them the usual spiel. Hmm, come on in. Let's see what we can do for you. Huh! Did you get all that, mister? M m my sincere apologies! <laughs> I am Hiragi Shinsuke, Kanjo Commissioner and Head of the Hiragi Clan. It's an honor to meet you both. Nice to meet you, sir. So, the reason we wanted to come and see you was because... All right, all right, all in good time. Two travelers renowned far and wide have shown up to see me, and I should very much like to make their acquaintance. Let's not limit this to business only. <laughs> so what you're saying is we really are pretty famous, huh? Absolutely. How many other people in the world have what it takes to knock the wind out of Storm Terror's sails and put the Overlord of the Vortex back under the sea, eh? Exactly! Paimon thinks you make an excellent point. And I hear you also foiled a Fatui plot in Liyue Harbor. Even beat one of their harbingers in a duel. Is that true? Hmm... as I thought. Something wrong? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm simply awestruck by you both is all. Rito is greatly honored to have you visit us. One other thing I heard about you is your great zeal for helping other people. Hmm... this makes me wonder. Whether you might be so kind as to render your assistance to the Kondro Commission. Oh, well, sure, no problem. Whatever you need, right? Excellent. Well then, you must know the Qingxin. 
A flower grows on the mountaintops of Liyue. Yep, we've picked a few of those before. So, uh, you want us to go back to Liyue? Yes, bring me 300 Shinxin, would you? Freshly picked, I mean. Uh, did Paimon hear that wrong? Hmm? Too much trouble, is it? Hmm, I see. Then how about this? We have a few items that need delivering. Perhaps you can help with that? That sounds much more like it. 709 letters, to be precise. Hey, what gives? How come you don't have people to do that already? Terribly sorry. We're just a little short on people lately. What sort of an explanation is that? Traveler, what are we going to do? Should we really help this guy? That's the spirit. Don't keep me waiting too long now. <laughs> you two. Huh? What did we do? Miss Hiragi has a letter for you. She insists that you read it immediately. A letter? Quick! Let Paimon see! So this means she wants you to secretly meet her at night? But you didn't seem surprised at all by this. What's going on? Finally arrived. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Hiragi Chisato. This is technically the second time we have met. It's a pleasure to see you again. Wow. She's the daughter of the Hiragi clan, all right. Uh, no need to be so formal. I've long marveled at your accomplishments, and at last we have the chance to meet. Is it Paimon, or does something seem a bit off here? The reason why I wanted to secretly meet you here is... Well, I feared that I might never have another opportunity to discuss this with you. Discuss what? Ahem. I should like to ask for your help with delivering a letter. Ugh. Like father, like daughter. Couldn't you be more original? No, you misunderstand me. Please, allow me to explain. I was hoping that you could deliver a letter to Narukami Island in my stead. It is to be given to Kujo Kamachi of the Tenryo Commission. My father has always forbidden me from communicating with him. He knows that there are prospects for my marriage that would better serve him politically. But my heart is with Kamachi. <sighs> there is no one who would dare defy my father's will on Rito, but you are outlanders. Outlanders seeking to get to Narukami Island. It would be regrettable to let such an opportunity pass. Oh, Paimon gets the whole picture now. Of course, in doing so, I will also do everything in my power to help you leave Rito. That is my promise. To be perfectly honest, as long as you remain in Inazuma, my father will have no intention of letting you leave Rito. Yeah, we figured as much. It was pretty obvious he was just trying to hold us up here. I secretly overheard a conversation between my father and a very arrogant-sounding woman just a few days ago. They seem to be discussing how to keep you here on Rito. In fact, 
It was the first time I had ever heard my father speak so respectfully to someone who wasn't the Shogun. We don't have much time. I'll tell you my plans to help you off the island. It just so happens that a shipment of goods is... Very well. I'll be waiting for you at the border. I'm counting on you to deliver my letter. Hold on, please. These goods are being sent to... Watatsumi Island? My lady, this is an unexpected honor. Uh, you are correct. These goods have been repeatedly requested by the Kanjo Commissioner. We must be certain that they reach Watatsumi Island intact. Is there something wrong, Lady Hiragi? No, as you were. My father simply has some concerns of the shipment's safety, and has ordered that myself and an additional qualified escort be dispatched to ensure safe transport of the goods. My lady, you aren't suggesting that you intend to escort this shipment personally, are you? There's certainly no need for you to trouble yourself with such a matter. And as for this qualified escort... Please, do not cause us any further delay. If memory serves me right, my father has already asserted that this shipment must arrive on time. I'm certain punishment will be duly dispensed if it fails to do so. Yes, of course, my lady. It, it's just that, well, we don't know who this... Now, need I remind you of the penalty if anything were to happen to me en route? I'm sure you are all quite familiar with my father's temperament. Do you really presume that you can fully guarantee my safety on your own? Boy, Chisato can talk the talk. They don't stand a chance. Uh, uh yes, my lady. Very well, then. It's an honor to have you accompanying us. Your safety is our highest priority. Shinojo, you can't really be agreeing to this. Well, the request is from Lady Hiragi herself. It is our duty to serve her in the utmost capacity. Yes, but that's not the problem here. Well then, if we're through here, I suggest we set off at once. Dawdling will only allow potential thieves more time to prepare, no? Yes, my lady. You heard her? There's no time to lose. My lady, please stay back. We'll handle it. Not as well as we'll handle it! Let's light it up! Stand clear! Absorption test! Let's light it up! Animal test 6308! Lady Hiraki, at all costs. We'll take care of this. Stay with Chisato.
<sighs> we can take refuge in the village up ahead. How are you faring, my lady? I'm perfectly all right. You may stop here. The road to Narukami Island is just over there. <clears throat> in my letter, I've requested Kamaji to grant you a special travel permit from the Tenryo Commission. Consider it a token of my appreciation. My lady. Huh. So that's how it is. I, I had a feeling something was amiss, but Shinojo, you... No, Lady Hiragi would never hide anything from us, I'm sure of it. But who is this Kamaji you speak of, my lady? I'm not afraid to say that he's the one I love. The one you love? Shinojo, did you honestly think that... What? No, I, uh, <clears throat> I was just... Clarifying, that's all. I, I would never in my wildest dreams, uh... <clears throat> you two needn't worry. Please, forget that this ever happened. If my father catches word of it, I alone will be held accountable. Yes, of course. As you wish, my lady. But what will happen if your actions here are discovered, Chisato? Don't fret. My father has always been one to spoil me. The worst he'd do is sentence me to half a day without food, or something to that effect. Huh. Paimon never suspected a guy like him could have a soft side. I wish you a safe journey. I'm sure we will meet again. Bye, Chisato! Come now. Quit your staring and let's get moving. We've got goods to shift. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs>
Sorry, we don't serve the general public. I'm afraid you'll have to leave. Wait! We're not the general public! Well then, you must be a couple of wandering outlanders that snuck into the nation, judging by your attire. <gasps> Are our clothes really so... Uh, oh, uh, what Paimon means to say is... <sighs> hmm, the Yashiro Commission seal. This must be from Mr. Toma. It seems there's more to you than meets the eye. In which case, welcome to the Komore Tea House, a safe haven for the Yashiro Commission. Well, that sounds more like it. Forgot their promise. I was beginning to think you'd forgotten about me. What? Is that dog talking to us? <laughs> Relax. No need to look so surprised. I take it this is the first time you've seen me in this form? Huh. So you didn't see anything like this when you were in Leo Harbor? Ah, oh, now that you mention it, this does suddenly seem less out of the ordinary. <laughs> All right, all right. I've had my fun. Hey! You're this close to getting an ugly nickname, mister! <laughs> well, I've had some time to kill, given that I've been waiting here for you for so long, as was the case in Rito. So I came up with this little fun greeting for when you arrived. But in all seriousness, I would like to apologize about that little test you went through earlier, though it was quite necessary. It helped us determine whether or not to bring you before Miss Kamisato, and whether you had the courage to face the lightning alongside us. Hmm. Don't think that Paimon's gonna forgive you just because you're getting all serious now. <laughs> Sorry, did I overdo it? My apologies. Let me just say this. You've often found yourself skirting the rules from the very beginning, haven't you? Naturally, this is due to your unwavering and resolute determination. A long time ago, we had a friend who was much the same, but when the lightning struck... Ah, so you've heard of his story. Hmm. His light still burns all the more brightly. Yes, of course. I will bring you to the Kamisato residence where the Yashiro Commission is located. But before that, there is one other place I was hoping you both would accompany me to. Oh? Where? I would like you to come with me to the statue of the Omnipresent God. It's still under construction now, but you can already see it from practically anywhere on Narukami Island.
often, do they? Huh? Uh, are Paimon's eyes playing tricks? Or are there things embedded in the statue? Visions. Visions? You mean all the visions that are collected from the Vision Hunt Decree are put into the statue? So you've already heard of the Vision Hunt Decree. Before I try to explain, I should perhaps remind you first that Mondstadt is the City of Freedom, and Liyue is the City of Contracts. As for Inazuma, it's known as the Nation of Eternity. The Raiden Shogun is both the nation's most powerful ruler and its deity. The Eternity in question is her endless and unchanging will to rule over Inazuma. As such, she relies on the Tri Commission to regulate the nation's affairs and the Sokoku Decree to limit the people's movement. The Shogun wishes to keep Inazuma in stasis, allowing the stream of time to flow from one end to the other without disturbing it for all time. Seems like every god has their own will. Of course, this is my own limited understanding. As for the reason behind the recent Vision Hunt Decree, Perhaps the Shogun believes that visions grant people the power to change, and that her eternity doesn't allow for such instability to exist. Whatever the case, the fact is that the Raiden Shogun has dispatched the Tenryo Commission to scour the nation for visions, embedding each one in this statue. And this statue of the omnipresent god can be seen as Inazuma's symbol of eternity. But if that's the case, what the Raiden Shogun is being... oh, I don't know... selfish? <laughs> Only outlanders such as yourselves would ever dare speak out so directly against the Raiden Shogun. And yet, I agree. The Vision Hunt Decree is something that simply should not exist. And Miss Kamisato has been committed to fighting it since the day it was announced. <laughs> Are you okay? You look like your mind is elsewhere. Sound? What sound? I didn't hear anything. Did something happen? Yeah, you touched the statue, and then... And then what? Aspirations? Hmm. That would seem to confirm the saying. Have you heard it before? That when a person's ambition reaches a certain strength, the gods look upon them with favor. That is where visions come from. In other words, a person's vision represents their ambition. So if what you just said is true, then the ambitions of these people are stronger than I imagined. All right, time for the next stop on our tour of Narukami Island, the Kamisato residence. <sighs> Finally! Dang. Let me try my blade. Huh. 
The place where the big shots of Inazuma live, huh? Hmm. Paimon kind of expected it to be snazzier. Welcome at last to the Kamisato residence, honored guests. Miss Kamisato is delighted to finally meet you. Is this the Shirasage Himigimi you keep going on about? So, uh, where's she at? <clears throat> oh, uh, behind the screen? Yes. <laughs> As the daughter of the Yashiro Commission, this is how Miss Kamisato is accustomed to receiving guests. Consider it a time-honored tradition within the Yashiro Commission. Forgive me if this is an unwelcome surprise. Mm, makes sense. She's a super important person after all. Please forgive my lack of courtesy for receiving you in this fashion. Especially following such a long and wearisome journey over the sea. I have awaited your arrival with great anticipation. And Toma assures me that you do indeed possess the power to change the tide of the times. At present in Inazuma, in the name of the Vision Hunt Decree, the people's aspirations are being senselessly trampled underfoot. Though the Yashiro Commission serves the Shogun, it is the people with whom we share close bonds, given the contact we are required to have with them in the performance of our duties. A commission's power rises and falls with the trust of their people. Thus, we cannot remain indifferent to this situation without also remaining indifferent to our own fate. Traveler, lend us your power and we can... Oh... <sighs> See, milady, it's just like I said. This will take us nowhere. No, please! Wait! Please, don't go! <sighs> I will introduce you to the Raiden Shogun, on one condition. You must fulfill three small wishes on my behalf. What are your wishes? They pertain to three whose visions were taken from them. Perhaps once you've met them, you will understand. A warrior who guards a village, a former samurai who helped carry out the Vision Hunt Decree, and a swordmaster determined to become the best in the world. Does Paimon got that right? Correct. Please do all you can to help them. I will await your return here. <laughs> then you have my gratitude. <laughs> I'm sure you'll do great.
this about why are you doing this why leave all of a sudden after all these years precisely it's much too sudden we've had no time to prepare the children are desperate for you to take them out to play please we urge you to reconsider that must be the guy ayaka told us about let's go over and see Ah, you must also be here to try and convince Tejima to stay. Tejima has protected this place ever since he arrived here 30 years ago. Keeping out the treasure hoarders, fending off any monsters that draw near, resolving quarrels between the villagers. He has put an enormous amount of work into looking after this place. But now, all of a sudden, he says he plans to leave us. We will gladly apologize if that's the case. All we want is for him to stay. <sighs> if you want my opinion, something to do with the Vision Hunt Decree. It's clear that Tejima had done nothing wrong, and still they confiscated his vision. After that, he became a completely different person. I can't claim to fully understand it, but I could tell that he'd lost something very important to him. Truth be told, we aren't sure whether trying to keep him here is the right thing to do. But equally, it doesn't feel right to let him leave when he's in this state. He's a lost soul. Seems like he's a well-respected guy around here. be Tejima. So what's made you want to up and leave all of a sudden? Me? I... It's not a question of why I want to leave, but a question of what reason I would have to stay. True, but that's not why I chose to stay here. And what made me want to come here 30 years ago? And why have I never wanted to leave in all that time? I don't have answers to those questions, because I can't remember anymore. Ever since they took my vision away, it's like... a slice of my memory is gone. In the past, I knew I wanted to stay here. But whatever resolve I had then, it's gone now. So I thought, what's to stop me from moving around instead? The emptiness inside me will be there either way. Okay. Well, in that case, if we help you rediscover the reason you chose to stay, you won't need to leave anymore, right? Hmm. But if you can't remember anything, it's not gonna be easy. Oh! Maybe if you just try a little harder to remember, then it'll all come flooding back? Oh, that reminds me. Last time I brought Tejima some fruit, I do believe I saw him writing in a diary. Mm, I keep a diary? If you say so. I honestly can't seem to remember. Oh yes, yes you do! And what's more, I remember you saying at the time that you wanted to make a note of a few interesting things. Things which would prove very important at a later date. Perfect! So if we want to keep Tejima from leaving, we just need to find his diary! It must be around here somewhere. Let's take a look! If you don't mind, we will leave you to find the diary. We should head back to the village to inform the others of Tejima's situation. Alright, let's see what we have here. Today, the villagers and I got together to cook dried braised salted fish. I messed up 
up and burned mine a little, so I had to pretend that it was Black Snakehead instead. Today, I helped rescue a kid who had fallen in the water. After I pulled him out, he told me that his best friend Bamboo was still in the water. I searched the water the whole afternoon before finding out that Bamboo was the name of his pet crab. I went kite flying today. The string broke, so I chased after it as fast as I could. I soon realized I was never going to get it back, so I just found somewhere to sit and watch as it flew away into the distance. Hmm. Seems like your average diary of daily village life. Huh? Wait! There's more! I went to pray at the shrine again today and stayed there a while. The omamori you gave me has faded a little, but it is still my most treasured possession. Now that's the kind of info we're looking for! Time to pay a visit to the shrine! Tejima wrote about. Hmm, interesting. Looking at the color and the design, Paimon would have thought it belonged to a child. But anyway, if he had this with him all the time, there's a chance some of his elemental energy remained on it. Do you think that it might come in handy? I wish it could be like this all. that Tejima visited a lot? The soil looks like it's been disturbed. Maybe Tejima buried something precious here. Something that kept him in the village all these years? Must be something pretty amazing if it made him stick around for 30 years. Let's dig it up and take a look. Oh, it looks like a letter. The paper's gone yellow. Must have been written a really long time ago. Konda Village. Sounds so familiar. Where is that place again? Huh. So the reason Tejima came here was to wait for someone. But he's been here for 30 years. Oh, guess they didn't show up in the end, huh? Well, let's go give Tejima his stuff back and take it from there. Well, I'll be. That's certainly my handwriting. And I guess the Omamorian letter belonged to me, too. <clears throat> but I have no memory of anything that's written in this diary. Still, it's clear that I was waiting for someone here, and that I chose to wait for 30 years. Over the years, I must have made a note of anything interesting. Anything that I could share with her when we were finally reunited. <sighs> and just look at all the things that did happen over the years. The time has flown by so quickly. Thirty years feels like the blink of an eye. How could I have forgotten something so important to me? Hmm... <sighs> Now that I think about it, when my vision was taken from me, it felt like I'd suddenly been... Love? Regret? Everything I felt for her... It's all disappeared. No. Not especially. After all, I've forgotten who she was. Her face. Her voice. The things we experienced together. I barely recall any of it. It's as if she'd never been in my life to begin with. 
as if all these years have been nothing but a hazy dream. Mm, I think maybe not. If this is something I waited most of my life for, I suppose I should carry on waiting. Although, what if she were to turn up eventually, only to find I didn't remember so much as her name? Wouldn't that be upsetting for her? When I think about it like that, I do feel a slight tinge of sadness in my heart. How curious. Why am I thinking like this when I don't even remember who she is? It's just like that feeling of emptiness. The feeling that something is... missing. <sighs> Thank you both for helping me reconnect with my reason for staying here. I shall remain here and keep waiting for her. Kejima seems to be dealing... okay. But still... It makes Paimon really sad. Seems it's just like Ayaka and Toma were saying. If you lose your vision, you lose all your hopes and dreams too. That certainly explains the state Tejimo was in earlier. At least we were able to help him, weren't we? <sighs> well, let's go find the next person. According to Miss Kamisato, the second one who lost their vision is a samurai from the Tenryo Commission. Commission is directly controlled by the Shogun. They're the ones responsible for maintaining law and order in Inazuma, the ones actually enforcing the Vision Hunt Decree. But why would they take action against one of their own? Oh, Paimon doesn't get it. Huh? There seems to be some commotion over there. Let's go see what's happening. I'll ask one more time. Do you intend to withhold this month's emergency provisions? The entire clan is counting on that food! We demand an explanation! How many times do I have to say it? I don't know anything about emergency provisions! You dare deceive us? Those provisions are essential! Do you understand? Not some goods to be pocketed by greedy samurai! You samurai think you can just do whatever you please? The Tenryo Commission will hear of this! Oh, huh? And who are you? One of Kurosawa's gang, no doubt. Uh, what? We just happened to be passing by! We heard the commotion and came to see what the matter was. I see. You seem to have come just at the right time. Perhaps you can help us settle this matter. This is Kurosawa. He's a samurai and a member of the Shogun's army. They issue emergency provisions to the area, and he's the one responsible for distribution. In the past, we'd simply ask him for provisions and everything would be delivered. Now, he suddenly refuses to give us anything. He's keeping the provisions for himself, I just know it! We'll starve without them! No one seems to care about us. We used to think Kurosawa was a kind man. But he's shown his true colors. He's the same as all the other samurai. It's no wonder all the visions have been confiscated. The Raiden Shogun doesn't need people like him helping her rule the nation. This must be one of the people Ayaka asked us to help. But why would she ever want us to help someone like him? Maybe we should talk to Kurosawa and see what he has to say. I've never even heard of these emergency provisions. I don't know whether it's rumors or whether they're trying to blackmail me. But either way, it's ridiculous. If I was hoarding supplies, would I still be the poor man I am today? My own family can barely get by as it is. No, if you'll excuse me, I've got other matters to attend to. And that's the first bit of truth I've heard all day. 
The Shogun's army told me that I was unworthy of my vision. And they said I was slacking off in my work. Apparently, I'd even disappointed the Raiden Shogun. And that's why they confiscated my vision. Well, that's strange. You were helping enforce the Vision Hunt Decree. Why would you be unworthy of your vision? To be perfectly honest, I don't seem to remember the details. All I know is that I would perform certain things every month. But I don't recall what they were. And it's not just that. I have this unsettling feeling. Like, like someone owes me something. Does it have to do with the missing emergency provisions? I didn't take any. Like I said, if I was taking them for myself, I wouldn't be going through such hard times right now. To top it all off, my house was just raided by treasure hoarders. Which is why I came here in the first place. I was chasing after them when I got held up by these two. If you don't believe me, go find the treasure hoarders yourself. If there were any emergency provisions to be had, they would have found them. Huh. He seems to be telling the truth. But we better confirm. Let's go round up those treasure hoarders and see what they have to say. We should be able to follow their tracks. They couldn't have gone too far. We really outdid ourselves this time. All those samurai houses packed with goods? <laughs> we really hit the jackpot. I mean, besides that one house. You haven't seen anything yet. There'll be a lot more where this came from. Today's just the beginning. I'll be leading you all on an epic journey of pillage and plunder that will go down in hoarder history. You demand, boss! These seem like the treasure hoarders we're after. Let's teach them a lesson! Adventure time! <laughs> Another <laughs> test subject. Absorption test! Here, animal test, 6308. Aw, oh, there goes all the mora. We worked hard to steal that, you know? Come on, boss, think of something. Ahem, <clears throat> not bad, kid. You ever think of joining the treasure hoarders? We could use someone like you. Kurosawa. Oh, I remember. So he's the one who sent you after us, huh? <laughs> Just our luck. I knew we shouldn't have hit that place. So what did you see inside? Was it stuffed with food supplies? <sighs> food supplies? <laughs> you kidding? That place was a complete mess. All we found was a strange looking box, hopefully with valuables inside. I didn't want anyone else to see it, so I was planning on opening it myself once we got back. But now that you've caught us, how about we make a deal? That little box for our freedom. What do you say? You've got a deal! Now show us what's in the box! Huh? What the? Th there's nothing in here but IOUs! Yeah, a lot of them too! And they all seem to be made out to the owner of a general goods store, a Miss Aoi. We're talking tons of Mora here. We better talk to this Miss Aoi and get to the bottom of this. As for you guys, you're free to go. Just pray that our paths don't cross again. Y yes of course. So we redeemed ourselves for some IOUs. Uh, does that mean we broke even? Shut it. Let's just get out of here.
Welcome to Tsukumomono Groceries. We've got everything you need. Can I help you find something? Or perhaps, there's something you want to inquire about? Ah, so you're friends of Kurosawa, I take it. <laughs> perhaps you're here to pay off his debts. Whoa, whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're just here to learn where they all came from. How did Kurosawa end up owing you so much money? Did he buy anything super expensive here? Let me think. Kurosawa would come regularly to purchase large quantities of foodstuffs. He'd always put the payment on his own account. However, the price of provisions began to skyrocket recently, and his salary was no longer enough to cover the cost. So, he started writing out IOUs to cover whatever he couldn't afford of the usual amount. So that's how he was getting those emergency provisions. But why did he have to purchase a usual amount? If the prices increased, couldn't he just buy less? Well, if you think about it, the citizens receiving the emergency provisions must have been carefully calculating how much they needed to sustain them each time. Kurosawa thought that it would be quite the disappointment for them if they found they didn't have enough, especially after such long and careful planning. So he deemed it necessary to take on the debt rather than let the people down. Wow. Kurosawa was purchasing all the emergency provisions at his own expense! And no one ever appreciated what he did. They just complained and held him accountable! People's attitudes will always reflect their circumstances. In the face of hardship, nobody cares to think twice. Uh, if you ask me, had Kurosawa told everyone the truth about the supplies from the start, then there wouldn't be such a severe backlash now. Of course, I'm sure there would still have been some unrest. What he was doing was truly a thankless deed. As for why he chose to spend his own money on emergency provisions and never tell anyone, I'm still not too clear myself. If you're still curious, why don't you go ask him yourself? I see... That reminds me, it seems that his vision was recently confiscated. Most unfortunate. If he doesn't clear the debt on his name, he'll have no choice but to sell that sword that is so dear to him. Sword? What sword? Oh, didn't he tell you? He possesses a very valuable blade. He's carried it for years now. I've asked him about its origins. He told me that it was a gift from his father, that it was too precious to sell. In hindsight, I regret that I never made an offer on it. Everything has its price, at least that's what I think. Why don't you ask him about the sword yourself? Perhaps it'll even provide you with the answers you're looking for. Oh, but before you go, if you would kindly settle today's bill. <laughs> but we didn't buy anything! <laughs> Information is also a kind of commodity, wouldn't you agree? Don't worry, I won't charge much for information about Kurosawa. Nothing we ever discussed was explicitly confidential anyway. Oh, let me think. 2,000 mora should be a fair price. At least we now know where the emergency provisions are coming from. But let's go talk to Kurosawa again and see if he can remember anything. <laughs> presented them with a choice. Either they left or I drew my sword. They left. It turned out to be a real time saver, actually. Perhaps I should start using it more often. Did you manage to track down the treasure hoarders? Everything I said was true, right? That just about 
sums it up. It turns out that you really were distributing emergency provisions, but they were all purchased at your own expense. Strange. Is that really the kind of person I was? I don't really have any such recollection. Even after all you've told me, I still don't remember anything. Why was I purchasing emergency provisions for everyone? And why would I put myself in such a difficult situation? <sighs> I really don't understand. But I cannot deny that when I brandished my sword to scare those two away, I could sense that my body was somehow reluctant to do so. And this sword was once wielded by my father. I remember once when I was young, I wanted to sneak out with the blade and show it off to the kids next door. My father ended up catching me in the act and scolded me severely. What did he say? <sighs> I can't seem to remember that either. It would seem that I forgot many important things when my vision was taken from me. So many memories gone. Forever. No matter how hard I try to remember. All I can remember now is my father telling me that this blade bore his life's creed. Before he passed away, he placed the sword in my hands and said to me, With this sword, you should. Hey, if you look carefully, there seems to be some words engraved on the hilt. Can you recognize the words? Virtue and justice? Somehow those two words seem to explain everything now. Taking on seemingly endless debts to make others happy. I guess that must have been my greatest ambition after all. But what use are virtue and justice? I purchased the provisions for those in need. And look how things ended up. The Tenryo Commission seized my vision. And the very people I was so desperately trying to help refused to understand me. And the irony of all of it is, I somehow still felt sorry when threatening them with my blade. I'm incapable of being a good person, yet I'm equally unable to be bad. I... I don't know what to do with myself. Yet another troubled soul. When we get the chance, let's speak to Toma about Kurosawa's debt. The Yashiro Commission would surely help cover his expenses. In any case, we must never let him sell off that sword. Yeah, seems like losing all ambition is a terrible experience. Fortunately for us, you don't have a vision. Let's go find the next poor soul. Vision taken is supposed to be a famous sword master around these parts. Hyman heard that he's the present day master of Make Your Shisui art. Sounds pretty impressive. This is his dojo. Luckily, there's some people around. Let's go talk to them. Nanako, don't worry. Since they will be fine. Those thugs that challenged the dojo were strong, but he fought them all off in the end, didn't he? Maybe, but. I'm still worried about him. Things have gotten dangerous before in the past, but it's never shaken him. This time, though... It's just because he's been possessed, that's all. Once the exorcism has taken place, he'll be right as rain in no time. Hey there! Did something happen? Who are you? I don't care whether you're trespassers or just here to harass us while Sensei is impaired. Get out of here immediately! Don't make me draw my blade, or you won't live to regret it. No, you got it so wrong. Um, we just came here to, uh... Disciples? Uh, yep, yep. 
We've heard all about the mighty master of Mekyo Shisui art. It's the whole reason we came all this way. To seek him out and ask him to train us. But then we got here and overheard you talking about how he got possessed or something? Hmm. From the way you're dressed, it doesn't look like you're from around here. Please, accept my apologies. We've had so many people trying to cause us trouble recently that we're on high alert. You haven't arrived at the best of times, I'm afraid. Since they got possessed recently, and he's still recovering. He's not a- I see you are earnest in your pursuit. <sighs> okay, how about this? My fellow disciple Nanako and I will explain Sensei's situation to you in a little more detail. Then you can decide whether to stay or to leave. Sensei's name is Domon, a name I'm sure you've already heard. Though self-taught, he mastered the art of the sword to a high level. He then proceeded to defeat many other prominent sword masters, never losing a single fight. He once said that his goal was to become the best sword master in the world. And so, even while training us, he continued to hone his own art. His fervor truly inspired us, and we trained hard, determined to keep up with him. But then... Not long ago, Sensei had his vision taken away. He hasn't been the same since. He says the strangest things over and over, and he refuses to let us train. Junya and I have discussed it, and, and we both think that he's been possessed by an evil spirit. So we've asked the Shrine Maidens from the Grand Narukami Shrine to perform an exorcism. But if I'm honest, I still have my doubts over whether he'll completely recover. The Grand Narukami Shrine? What's that? You haven't heard of it? It's the largest shrine on Narukami Island. The Head Shrine Maiden is reputed to have very close ties with the Almighty Shogun herself. Not that we'd have any means of involving the Head Shrine Maiden, of course. But even one of the ordinary Shrine Maidens from the Grand Narukami Shrine would have clear power and authority to perform an exorcism. So don't worry, Nanako. Sensei is going to be just fine. The exorcism will take place this evening. You're both more than welcome to come and watch if you're interested. So, losing your vision can cause possession? I uh, guess we should come back this evening and see for ourselves. decided to come. It's a good thing you didn't arrive any earlier. You would have had to witness Sensei one of his fits of madness. Just now, when Nanako was attending to him, she heard him whispering a few names to himself. When she asked him who the people were, he suddenly looked panic-stricken and pushed her away. It looked like he was in great distress. He was covering his ears and looking frantically around him with bloodshot eyes. All the while he kept calling those names. Some of them we knew, others we didn't recognize. But they all seemed to be the names of sword masters he had defeated in the past. One of them was Anzai. He used to be a fellow disciple of Sensei's, his senior, in fact. But Sensei defeated him in a duel many years ago, and he has been a wanderer ever since. Sensei wouldn't stop calling his name. <sighs> Thankfully, the Shrine Maidens managed to subdue him. So the exorcism can finally continue. The ritual has now begun. All we can do is patiently await the result. Here's hoping Sensei will be back to his normal self very soon. Please, excuse me for a moment while I fetch some water. If he wakes up, he is sure to be thirsty. Is this definitely the 
right place? Let's look a little further up. Aha! Suspicious... How... How did you... catch up with me... so quickly? Are you sure you're Dolmon's disciples? You move even quicker than he does. Unless... I guess it's been a few years. Maybe his skills have improved again. Um, excuse me! We're the ones asking the questions here! First off, who are you? And what are you doing sneaking around these parts? Hmm? You seem like bad news, mister! Bad news? <laughs> I'll have you know I trained side by side with Domon back in the day. Long before you ever showed up. I don't care to talk about that time anymore. But if you must know, I am Domon's senior. His senior? Wait, that means you but Anzai, yes, that's me. Because I don't wish to see Domon or anyone else associated with him ever again. When we were young, we trained under the same sword master, studying Make Yoshi Sui art together. I had begun training five years before him, and everyone looked up to me as a steady and dependable older disciple. Practitioners of Make Yoshi Sui art seek to achieve stillness of mind, freedom from all agitation. So the majority of disciples are indifferent to rank and reward. I was no exception. But Domon was different. The first thing he did when he joined was go straight to our sensei and ask him, with a beaming smile on his face, how to become the best in the world. Sensei scolded him and told him that the art of the sword should not be used for such vain ends. Sensei said that coveting the title of the best swordmaster, barely days into his training, showed that he had a fickle mind, and that this would impede him from ever mastering the blade. I thought so too at the time, but Domon began making swift progress in his training and even started catching up with me. Only then did I realize that it was Domon who had long since freed his mind from all agitation. He was consumed by his singular desire to become the best in the world. He sought nothing less than perfection in the art of the sword, and nothing could deter him from this goal. No matter what stood in his way. Sure sounds like he meant business. So how come you don't want to ever see him again? Because until he arrived, I was convinced that I would succeed our sensei as the master of Mekyo Shisui art. Of all the disciples, I was the most gifted. I had trained the longest. Everyone had high expectations for me. Domon's arrival changed everything. When we sparred, I lost not just the match, but my pride and my status, too. I fled the dojo that day and never looked back. Later, I heard that he sparred with Sensei, too. Sensei was advanced in years by then, and unfortunately that match used up every last ounce of energy in his body. After that I wanted nothing further to do with him. Deep down, though, I still respected his mastery of the blade and his commitment to the art of the sword. So, when I heard rumors that he had lost his mind, my first reaction was to dismiss them as false. How could he, of all people, have lost his mind? His mind was the sharpest of them all. He had practiced Make Yoshisui art to perfection. I decided to quietly come and see if it were true. Then, to my complete astonishment, I heard him call my name. I thought mine was a name he had long since forgotten. So you see, I came here not to cause him any harm. I just wanted to see for myself. Okay, you've heard my story. You should get back now. The exorcism is probably finishing. Hmm, seems like we got it wrong this time. He wasn't here to mess up the exorcism at all. Still, Paimon's not sure we should bring him back with us. Uh, let's go see how the exorcism's coming along. What? You're saying he... 
isn't possessed? Does that mean he's just lost his mind? But how is that possible? No, no, I refuse to believe it. Something's clearly wrong. Nanako, please, try not to get agitated. I am sorry. With what powers I have, I can find no sign of any malignant spirit having possessed Domon. But spirits may take a myriad of forms in this world, many of which I cannot claim to have witnessed myself. Thus, I dare not rule out possession with complete certainty. And all is certainly not lost, for I received word not long ago that Lady Yai has taken an interest in your sensei's case. L Lady Yai? Is that... The same Lady Yai that I think you mean? The head shrine maiden of the Grand Narukami Shrine? That's wonderful news! Then Sensei will be sure to recover! Correct. Lady Yai is most knowledgeable indeed, and has abundant experience in the exorcism of evil spirits and aversion of great calamities. I am unable to say for certain whether an evil spirit has possessed your Sensei, but Lady Yai can give a conclusive verdict. Excuse me, Miss Inagi, but I must ask, should we prepare a greeting gift for Lady Yai? That won't be necessary. All that is required of you is your timely arrival at the Grand Narukami Shrine. Lady Yai does not like to be kept waiting. I must leave now, but we will meet soon at the shrine. I wish Domon a full and speedy recovery. Who'd have thought Lady Yai herself would have taken notice of our Sensei's case? Do you mean to say that Sensei isn't renowned enough to deserve Lady Yai's attention? No, no! That's not what I meant at all! You misunderstand me! I just mean this is Lady Yai, the head shrine maiden. She has direct and close contact with the almighty Shogun herself. Um. <clears throat> anyway, you should join us too, tomorrow. Given that you've traveled all this way just to meet our Sensei, we, the disciples of Mikio Shisui Sweetheart, would do our best to help you. Sure! After all, everyone seems pretty excited about Lady Yai. We're curious to meet her too. Who knows? Maybe we'll be able to find out a thing or two about the Raiden Chokun from her.
feel it. Okay. What's one more, opponent? Face my flame. Junior is so excited. She has a really striking presence. Also, is it just Paimon? Or did she look right at us just now? Eh, it was probably nothing. It's not like she's ever seen us before. Keep away. Keep away from me. I gave up the art of the sword. Please, let me go, I beg you. As you can see, Lady Yai, Domon has persisted in this state for some time now. He appears to see those who have lost to him in duels past, gathered all around him to persecute him. Lady Ai, it must be a possession, right? This is nothing like him at all. In the past, no matter what came his way, he would always face it with a, a confident smile. Hmm. I'm sorry. It is clear to me that your sensei is not possessed by any evil spirit. But... Then did... Does that mean he... Hmm, yes. This is a change in the person himself. Unable to cope with the tremendous pressure he was under, he suffered a spiritual collapse. With his wits impaired, he finally descended into... madness. As one who is thrown into the sea, though he fights back desperately against his predicament, it does nothing to prevent his descent into the depths. As for what has triggered this change, I believe it must be the loss of his vision. For to be stripped of one's vision is to be stripped of one's... ambition. Stripped of his ambition? But Lady Yai, even without his ambition, why should he suffer such a dramatic change? How does that explain his descent into madness? Your school practices make you Shisui art, does it not? Stillness of mind, freedom from all agitation. <laughs> what a fine notion that would be if any in this world could ever hope to achieve it. There was once... one who claimed to be indifferent to rank and reward, and who fled enraged when defeated by his junior. And then there was an aged swordmaster who was aggrieved enough that he crossed blades with a disciple he himself had taught. Then, what of the one who crossed blades with his own sensei and beloved fellow disciple? And defeated them both? <laughs> Can one truly remain unagitated of still mind in moments such as these? Lady, I, I, I'm not sure I understand. Uh, the path of the sword masters filled with twists and turns. It is no small undertaking to pursue the position of greatest sword master in the world. 
It requires one to take their sword firmly in both hands and cut down the hopes and dreams of others, even those of one's closest companions. Only a deep commitment to his ambition to become the best made it possible for him to rise above the pain of these encounters, to focus on the way ahead. When that ambition disappeared, he began to doubt himself. As he battled his growing anxiety, he slowly descended into the state you see him in now. <laughs> Much like a certain fatally flawed friend of mine. Poor Sensei. To think he's been suffering so greatly. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. Father. Sensei. Onsai. That's enough. Huh? Isn't that Onsai? Where did he come from? Did he follow us the whole way here? Onsai. Why are there two of you? Is that you or a ghost? You're here for revenge, aren't you? I knew it would come. I never should have... You're right to assume that my feelings towards you are far from kindly. <sighs> but I didn't come here to settle a score. It's been so long now that I made peace with it years ago. You did nothing wrong that day. I just... I couldn't face the humiliation. That's why I ran. I don't think most of the people you beat along the way would hold it against you. On the contrary, when you cut our ambitions short, we entrusted them to you in the hopes that they might carry you further. Now I know that we can't place our hopes in you any longer, since you've been stripped of your ambitions too. But that is no reason to strip them of theirs. Follow the way of the sword all the way to the highest peak. You taught them that, didn't you? But what if one day, the same thing happens to them? I put everything I had into trying to become the best. But what if it was all a huge mistake right from the start? If there's a chance they'll end up like me one day, I'd rather they stay where they are now than go any further down this path. Have you asked them what they think? Sensei. After you rescued me from the hands of the pirates, I told myself I would follow in your footsteps for the rest of my days. I can't know whether I will suffer in my future as you do now. All I know is that here and now, in the present, I wish to continue. I want to keep going until the day that I can stand before everyone with my head held high and announce that I, like my sensei Domon before me, I'm a master of Meikyoshisui art. Nanako's far from the only one. Actually, all of us think that way. Goodness. Well, I... You see? You can place the ambition you once had in their hands. Being stripped of your ambition is something that's never happened to me. So I can't claim to understand it. But I do... So, just as I once placed my ambitions onto you... It is time for you to release yours into their custody. You are not in the same position that I was. When I left, I had nothing to my name. But you have a great number of worthy disciples. I... I understand. I'm sorry to have made you worry for me, and for the state of Miyakyo Shisui art. I no longer have the resolve to become the best in the world. The emptiness and suffering inside of me will not abate, so I cannot hope to still my mind and be free of agitation. But as your sensei, I shall commit to imparting unto you everything I have learned in my life so far. This is my promise. And I humbly ask Anzai, my senior, to hold me to my word. You can count on that. I'd be checking in on you occasionally anyway, just to make sure you hadn't lost your mind again. But I am now used to the life of a wanderer. I do not belong in the dojo anymore, so I will simply stop by once in a while to make sure you aren't cutting any corners with them. Well, don't just stand there staring at me. Say thank you to Lady Yai and then get yourself back home. So even though his ambition was taken away, his disciples can take it over on his behalf. Guess that sort of solves this one, huh? Traveler, 
A moment, please. Lady Yai has some words for you. So, my intuition was correct. The wind that blows from afar carries fresh life to these shores. For us to meet now is premature. Nevertheless, you set foot on these islands at precisely the right moment. Hmm, I have high hopes for you, child. Don't disappoint me. Ooh, Lady Yai seems to have taken a real interest in you. She seems super mysterious. Paimon's so curious what she really meant by all that. Hmm. We can come back to it another time. For now, we should go report back to Miss Kamisato. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> 